So now we want to look at some other simple recursive functions that we can write in Scala. We talked about this math function that added up the squares of the numbers from 1 to n. Let's go ahead and let's translate that to Scala. That instead of calling it f, I'm going to call it square sum. And it takes an int and it returns an int. I don't really have a need for a big int. This function isn't going to grow nearly as quickly. And so, just like before, I look here, my if is going to be this condition, which in this case happens to be the same condition as before, and the same base case. Else, we need that case there, which is n times n. That's how I represent square. Remember, this does not do a square in Scala. That does an exclusive or, which will not give you the result that you want. Then plus our square sum of n minus 1. Square sum, let's start small, of 2, this should be 5. Of 3, we add 9 to that, to get 14. Of 4, we add 16 to that, and we get 30. And we can stick in a larger number, or a larger number. Okay, uh, so once again, you know, this is something that I would not have wanted to type in all of, and we got the computer to do things repeatedly uh, by using recursion. Just having the ability to define a function that calls itself and has a conditional inside of it. Another very simple example of something we can do that's not pure mathematical functions is we can do something that has side effects in it. So standard example that I use for this to start off with is countdown. So I want to count down from some value down to 1. This function is only going to, and by count I mean print out. This function is only going to print stuff so it returns unit and I'm going to go ahead and put some curly braces here. So how do we define this function recursively? Well, say I want you to count down from 10. The first thing you do is you say 10. In this case, we'll print 10. And then you would say, I've, I've printed 10. What I have left to do is I have to count down from 9. Yeah. It's kind of intuitive if people say, well, I do 10, then 9, then 8, then 7. But instead of thinking of that way, to think of it in a recursive way, say, I do it for the first value, and then I say I'm going to do it for the rest of the values. So I print 10, and then I follow that by printing everything after 10. Now, the thing we have to remember is we need to have a base case. And in this situation, I don't want to print 0. So if n is greater than 0, then I'm going to do stuff. I'm going to print line of n. And then I'm going to call count down of n minus 1. Close that curly brace, close that curly brace. That gives us our count down function. I actually feel bad about the fact that I'm not, not indenting here. Remember, if you're writing things in a script and not in the REPL, if you put things inside of curly braces, they really should be indented. So we count down of 10, and sure enough, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Exactly what we wanted this to do. So when we called it with 10, it checked to make sure that 10 was bigger than 0. It printed the 10, and then it said count down from 9, which printed the 9 and said count down from 8, which printed the 8, repeat, 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 until, in the case of 1, it called this with 0. That was not greater than 0. And so nothing happened. It didn't print anything and it actually winds up returning back out uh, through all of the calls that it made. Let's count down. What if we want to do something that counts up? Yeah. I want to count from some value up to some other value. No. Count, let's define a function, def count from two. I'm going to pass in some arguments the thing I'm counting from, and the thing I'm counting to, which is an int. 
Once again, this doesn't return anything, so I'll say unit. To keep this simple, I'm going to assume that we're counting up here. You could write a version of this function that would work if from was greater than two and would count down in that case. It's a little bit harder, requires a little bit more logic to do it. But for this, I'm going to assume that we are that from is less than two, and so we're counting up to, to do this. So I would stop if from was greater than two. So as long as from is less than or equal to two, because I'm supposed to count to 10, I should say 10 or print 10. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to print out the from value, and I'm going to have a recursive call. Now here, so if I'm counting from one to 10, I print the one, and then I want to count from two to 10. So this becomes from plus one, and the two stays the same. It's not being altered. I'm still counting up to 10, if I had started with 10 in the first place. Except I left off the two when I wrote this. Note, so the error message not found count from, because I didn't call it count from. Scala doesn't care about spelling. All that it cares about is that the way you spell things, it always matches. So count from two, close, close. Okay, let's test it. Count from two, one, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. So that is one way that we can do a counting up function. Uh, we passed in two arguments, one of which changed on every iteration of the recursion, the other one didn't. The way it changed took it closer to the base case each time so that eventually it would not happen.